the Lord. Buana Safiwe. Buana Safiwe Sana. Can we appreciate Mama Joy? Pastor Brian. The whole worship team, you guys, entered in the house of the Lord. Sante Sana. Thank you, thank you. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Wow, how do you transition from that? Ooh. You, go you, you go up from here? Is it, oh, my word. This is just what an incredible church. We honor and praise Bishop Dr. Jimmy we and Mama. We don't praise him. Ah, we give we thanks him. for him. We, we honor him. him. We love him. And Mama Alice, can we, thank, can we say thank you to them? Thank you so much for allowing us this platform. We also have with us today our executive assistant, Boney. Please stand. We thank you for him. And Pastor Beatrice, thank you so much. We praise you. Thank you so much for giving us this platform. In Romans 8, 31, it tells us, if God is for us, who can be against us? Say that again. If God is for us, who can be against us? And so I want to read to you what God dropped in this nugget today. Think of it as, as Jesus speaking to you. He says, I am with you and for you. You face nothing alone. Nothing. When you feel anxious, know that you are focusing on the visible world and leaving me out of the picture. The remedy is simple. Fix your eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. All of your days, I will get you safely through this day. But you can find me only in the present. Each day is a precious gift from my Father. How ridiculous to grasp for future gifts when today is set before you. Receive today's gift gratefully. Can we all say gift? We want to receive a gift? Yes. Gift. Unwrapping it tenderly and delving at depths as you savor this gift, you will find me. Amen and amen. amen. We want to thank Dr. Ron Clark for being with us today. My name is Rhonda Clark. We have five, four, no, three children, five grandchildren, and I just want to give a shout out to our oldest son who will to be turning 35 this month. So happy birthday, son. We love you so much. I love you and miss him so much. Can we appreciate Anthony? Thank you. Uh, can you believe my baby's going to be 35 years old? I, my God. Oh. So we thank God for him. But I want to say a special prayer over Dr. Ron for his message that he's going to be preaching today. So can we lift our hands towards him and bow, bow our head and close our eyes and just believe God? In 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7 says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Dear Lord Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, we come to you with hearts filled with gratitude for the abundant blessing you give to us each day. We acknowledge that cheerful giving is not an obligation, but a joyful act of worship. Help Dr. Ron in helping us to understand that our giving is an expression of our deep love for you and our want for to further your kingdom here on earth. I pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Asante sana. Amen. Excuse me. <laughs> Before, one, uh, uh. Oh. All, right. all right. Praise the Lord. If you're sitting next to your spouse, give them a kiss. It's all right. It won't, it won't hurt you. I promise you, you will, you will be all right. Uh, 
Oh, you can stop now. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you can tell that this church has been in fasting and prayer. There is such a sweet spirit here today. Can you, it's, it's, all, it's tangible. I mean, as, as Joy was singing, there's, it's like you could taste it. You can, you know what I'm saying? It's beautiful. It's going to be a great year. It's going to be the best year we've ever had. I mean, it's going to make 2023 look like 2023. You know, that was a, this was a, this past year was a tough year getting started after COVID and all these different things. It's just been, it's been rough for everybody. The whole world has been suffering. Then we've got wars, rumors of wars. We've got famines. Guess what landed on my balcony yesterday? Locusts. I'm thinking the last thing that we need in this country right now is locusts. So can we just curse those locusts right now and send them back to wherever they came from in Jesus' name? Go back, go back, go back to the desert because that's where they live when they're not swarming. They're in the desert. But uh, we don't need any locusts. You know, I've got a message that in my church years ago, I taught it every year. And it's one of those messages that forms the foundation of our church. And I told Bishop what I was going to be preaching, and he agreed that this, this message is needed here today and in this season now. It is a message that I got from my spiritual father, Oral Roberts. It's one of one of the messages he was known for throughout his life. But if you will, if you'll take this message and act on it, you will be talking about different things this time next year. You won't be talking about the same things that you are now. Some of you need to move up another level. I'm going to give you a key on how to do that, if you want to. Are you ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for your anointing to come upon me. I am nothing. You are everything. We've not come here today to hear the words of a man or to be touched by a man We've come here to hear what you have to say and to be touched by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Make these words that you've put in my heart, make them come alive. And when we leave here, Lord, let it get further than the parking lot. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now turn to the book of Genesis. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, what is that called? The Pentateuch, say it, the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch, say it. The Pentateuch means the first five books, it's five books. These are the first five books of the Bible. Amen. In this uh, story that uh, we're coming at the end of, of Noah's flood and because of this flood the earth was cleansed and it had a chance to start over the great thing about being a Christian is you can start over every day every day if you how many of you uh, make a mistake every once in a while I hear that you're pretty close to near perfect, but every time you ask for forgiveness, it's washed away as if, and God treats you as if you've never did anything wrong. Are you with me? 
during this season, God said, I'm not going to ever do that to the world again. Global warming has turned into, now I don't know what it is, because it's, you know, global warming ends up global cooling. When I was a boy, younger man, in the, seven, in the well, I was in the military, so I, in the 70s, they, they were afraid of an ice age. So everybody was freaking out that the, we're, the, the, the whole world was going to turn into a, a, an ice cube. Well, then, then it got too hot. Then they said, well, oh, no, 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 it's not global cooling, it's global warming. When they, they found it's cooling off, now it's, it's just climate change, which climate change is going to change every day. There's a change in our climate, amen? amen. So I'm not looking for trouble we already have enough of that. I'm, I, I think we're going to be okay. I think God built this world to endure, and I think we're going to be okay. Do you, do you think we'll have another flood? I don't think we need any more arcs. I, I think we could, you know, I, I met, met a church that they were saving their money to build a church in the shape of an ark just in case the floods came back. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how, how dumb can you get and still breathe? You know, that's just seems a little bit insane to me, but everybody has a revelation, you know. All right, turn to Genesis 8, 22. I don't know if you guys, some of you got a raise or something, but you guys are looking extra good today. I don't know. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're looking beautiful. Just tell them. It, it, they know it. I mean, they got... You know, some, some women got up early this morning around 3.30 and started putting it all on, and by the time they get here, they're incredible. Genesis 8.22, it says, While the earth remains, everybody stomp a foot. Do we still have it? Earth's still here. Okay, we're good. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, Day and night shall not cease. Now let's read that, that again and out loud together. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Not going to worry about those things. Not going to change. The part I want you to particularly focus on is seed time and harvest. Actually, in the Hebrew, it's seed time harvest. We've made it in the English seed time, like it's just one thing. But it's seed. When you plant your seed, then you have what's called time. Between the planting of the seed and the harvest, there is what? Most of the... Growing is done in between those things, and, and a lot of it's done, and you can't see it. it. You just have to trust that if you put the seed in the ground, and you are watering that seed and taking care of it, that even though you can't see it at work, that seed is growing, and one day will pop up, and you'll get a manifestation that you have planted something there. Same way when it comes to giving. When you pay your tithes, really it's you're sowing a tithe, you pay your bills. When you give that tithe, you, once it leaves your hand and goes into the church, it's no longer yours. But it's working for you. Even though you can't see it, it is growing a harvest for you in finances. Now, we've been out with the Maasai teaching them how to farm. That's a very... They're not used to that. I'm just going to be... I, I've seen Maasai elders who have never put their hands in dirt in their lifetime. Yeah. Digging and dunging the, the, the maize as they plant their, their, their field. 
But what it means is they're going, they, they have harvest time now. Where they didn't, if you don't plant anything, you don't reap anything. So we, we've had to have these kind of talks sitting down with elders. And you've got to convince the elders before you can ever talk to the people. And the elders will say, I think it's a great idea. I want to see it work first. So Boney and I, we had to go make it work first. And then they watch it. And when they say, hey, that does work, then they'll try it themselves. But if you can sow the seed and reap the benefit and not have to depend on somebody else to take care of you, the, the Messiah are going to be better off if they're self-sustaining. And so are you. If you don't need someone else to, to give you a handout, don't you think you'll be better off? If it's just coming in, you've planted it, it's going to come in your own harvest, and you're not having to wait for somebody else to give something to you. Now, it may come through somebody else, but it's not a handout then. It's a blessing. Amen. We've got this project in the, in the church to build five churches. Now, I've built a few of them in my own lifetime, and I know what goes into just building one. We're going to build five. Can you imagine? Now, if you look at that project as, here we go again, it's another, another, another project, and you, you don't participate in this, you are going to rob yourself of a chance to be blessed. Now, write this down. The tithe, and I'm not teaching on that today, the tithe is meant to take care of your needs. So if you're a tither, it means that your needs will be met. It is when you get into offerings and alms that you get your supernatural blessing. When you help the poor, we saw in Proverbs 19 and verse 17, He that giveth to the poor lendeth to the Lord, and from the Lord shall be repaid with interest. You see, there's, a, there's an extra blessing when you take care of the poor. When you help so into a school like is being where am I I think it's over here Bishop walked me around and showed me the the buildings and everything but when you when you go back over there it listen it takes vision to see beyond the blessing that you would get to to another generation and that's why we build schools we build schools because there's another generation coming there'll be generations after us that'll use that building so it's because we have vision of what the future is going to need, we sow seed into something that we won't even participate in. Are you with me? Seed time. Say it with me. Seed time harvest. Say it three, three words. Seed time harvest. Some of you are in the seeding side of this thing. You're in a season of, of planting. You find yourself giving extra. You find yourself sowing extra seed. Some of you are, have sown a lot of seed and now you're in the time part of this. And there's some of you in here that are getting ready to come into your, the, the greatest blessings of your life. And those blessings don't just fall out of the sky. They are a product of your faith and your seed. How many of you have needs? Three of us. If you have a need, next time you go to give, call your need when you sow your seed. Say, I'm not just sowing to scatter like throwing it out on the, on the ground. I'm planting with a purpose. So when you give, you say, I'm sowing a seed towards a new job or I need 
a, a car or I, I need a, 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 a wife. You better sow two seeds on that one. <laughs> but if you need something, name it as you sow seed. Don't just, don't ever drop money in an offering bag or, or send it to M-Pesa and you haven't spoken over it. Now the Lord said, can I speak to you? The Lord, just, just sit there, relax. You, you've worked hard today. The Lord said, there, there is something, um, it's a, I'm, I'm not sure anybody else knows what it is, but it's something you've been praying about. Maybe your mom does, but it's, it's something personal and private. And he didn't tell me because he's, you know, he's, he doesn't rat on us, but it's coming in this year. Now, you have sown towards this, whatever this is. Next year, this time, you'll remind me. So, as you sow seeds, sow for the release of that, that personal... I, I, I mean, he spoke to me when I came up and took your hand. That's why I did that. It's because God said, there, there's something, it's, it's just around the corner. And if I were the devil, and I'm not, but he doesn't want you to have it. And what he's going to try to do is get you to back away from it or to give up on it or to quit. Just before breakthrough comes the greatest trials. Now listen to this. When you're sowing as a farmer, your, your greatest expenses are at two times. First... The greatest expense comes at the beginning when you're sowing your seed. And then the second t time that you, your expenses go up is when you are bringing in the harvest. My grandfather, Mr. Hasty, was the largest maize farmer in the state of Florida. He had under plow each season, he had 5,000 acres under plow each season then he had another 5,000 that he was rotating that kind of thing and I remember that when one season I was a little boy probably about uh, somewhere between 8 and 10 and a hurricane was coming to the state and it was only four or five days away and they say it was going to come straight over grandpa's farm and Grandpa went out and hired every person he could possibly hire to come help get that harvest in. He had to go to the bank and borrow money to get that harvest in. But he pulled in the biggest harvest of his lifetime. See, he didn't let the storm have it. He got it in. So sometimes your expenses will go up just before you get a breakthrough. I had somebody in the church here say, I, 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 uh, I lost my job. I said, I, I'm so glad. Praise the Lord. And they looked at me and said, like, Dr. Ron, you have lost your mind. I said, no, 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 no. Sometimes you'll lose one because there's one better coming. Amen. And if you're stuck in that old job, and you become dependent on that old job and you're never going to let go of that old job because it takes care of your need. Sometimes he has to, to, to do a little pruning or a little trimming so that you are open to take the next job. And sure enough, we've been here how long? Four months? This church, four months? Six, four or five? Oh, it's all running into one big month. I can report to you, they're not in this service or at the other church, but they got it. They got a job that is a little more than double their pay. And the way they released that job is when the, they started buying the bricks. You know, we bought a few bricks. They, they, they had, took everything they had, everything they had, and they bought and it was within days that God broke through for them. 
Say, God wants to break through for me. Say it. God wants to break through for me. I can't wait to see what it is. But it's something you've been thinking about for a long time. Are you, are you with me? Turn to Mark chapter 4 and verse 26. Mark 4. I've got 25 minutes to preach an hour and a half. But I won't go that long. I promise you. Proverbs 4. I said, did I say that? What did I say? Mark 4. Mark 4. Start at verse 24. Uh, start at verse 23. It says, if anyone has ears, what? The word there actually is listen. You know, there's a difference between hearing and listening. Some of you hear, a few of you listen. Now, there are things going on. I've, I've heard music and things going on in the city around us that many of you, because you're, you live here, don't, you don't even hear it. It's, it tunes out. But when you're listening, you're, your focus is on what's being said. The word here is, if anyone ha has ears to listen, let him listen intently. Listen with your heart. Give it your full attention. Don't be distracted right now. Listen, I'm talking about how to get in the vault. I'm, I'm ta talking about how to get your miracle breakthrough. Don't let Satan come in and start talking to you about this and that and you're worried about next week. What Rhonda said to, earlier is today is the day. There's a key that's going to be given to you. And you're going to use that key and that key is going to unlock something for you in this year. That I'm saying right now. It says, to him who has ears to listen, let him listen intently. Then he said to them, take heed what you listen to. Listen, be careful the people that you let speak into your life. There are people that want to speak to you. They want to tell you all about it. And they're the wrong people. They've never done it. Listen, if you ever want to know how to build a business... Just go ask a Nairobi taxi guy. He can tell you how to build any business, do anything, because he sat in that car and listened to so many conversations, he's now become an expert. We ought to just give him a degree and let him go teach. The one thing I love about Bishop Jimmy and, and, and Past, Pastor Alice, Mama Sita, as I call her, is that they've done it. They live it. Bishop Mark Karayuki is my friend. He lives it. I see them when they're not in, in front of you, and they're the same people. In fact, they're probably better people behind the scenes. You see a different side of them. I would say the same is probably true with many of you. You all look great. You come to church, but who you really are is, is when you leave this place. He said... Be careful, take heed, be careful what advice, what kind of uh, 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 stuff you listen to. Turn off the TV, especially some of the stuff, you, the, the soaps and all that stuff. Turn off some of your neighbors who are just envious of you. Turn off some of your cousins who all they do is call you when they know you got a paycheck. Turn, just turn them off. Say, if, if I'm doing anything for you, cousin, I'm being a good example of how you can do it. I'm not, I, God didn't send me to rescue every time you get into financial trouble. Amen? With the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And, and to you who hear, more will be given. So the, the measure that you... The, the, the measure that you give to the thing that you're listening to, you're going to get more of it. 
if you're coming to church regularly and you're filling your, your mind with the Word of God and you're believing it, you be, you'll get more revelation. You'll get more understanding. You'll get more given to you. But if you cut off the Word of God from your life, it less and less will come to you until you're getting nothing. And when you hear a Christian say, I don't hear God anymore, it's because they're, they've stopped listening. They're only hearing. Now, what did I, how many of you heard me preach the last time? I preached here a month ago. How, how many were here when, when I preached last time? Let me see your hand if you were here. Where are the rest of you? My goodness. Those of you here, what did I preach on? What was the topic? Hope. Hope. Hope says God can. Faith says God will for me today. Hope is always in the future. Faith is always now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now faith is. We had a great service that day. If you can go back online, you can watch it. And, and it'll, it'll, it'll build you up. Because some of you don't even... Some of you have been hit so hard that you don't even... You're wondering if God can get you out of this one, if you're going to make it. Well, you need that message on hope. What you feed will grow. If you feed your doubts and fears, they'll grow. If you feed your faith, they'll grow. Are you with me? You will be given more to what you're listening to now. Get in a men's group. Get in a woman's group. I, I don't... Isn't there a ladies' group coming up here on the, what is it, the 28th? You're coming. You're coming, I'm sure. And it's for a couple of days. Ladies, if, if you have to take, take off work, get here. Get, listen, get away from that man for a couple of days. He'll be all right. He'll be okay. The kids will survive. Get here and get around women who are believing God and get yourself built back up so that you have something to give out to your family. This is going to be the greatest ladies meeting, I think, of the year. I would be here. I would not let anything get in your way. But whoever has to him more will be given, but to him who does not have even what he has will be taken from him. That, you know, there is, and I'm not saying this to be critical because I've been in Kenya now 10 years, so that kind of makes me somewhat a Kenyan. But there is, if, because I've been in so many different countries under 100, there is a poverty mentality that are in some of our Kenyan friends. They don't think about anything other than what they don't have. You ask them, uh, how are things going? They will immediately tell you what's not working. But if you have that kind of attitude where you're focused on what is not working, what's broken, you're, you're worried about it, it'll, it you're going to get more of that. Start calling those things that do not exist as though they already do. Don't let the devil trap you into just talking his talk. Say what you want, not what you fear. Now, the dear brother that preached in the youth service, I had more fun listening to that sermon. He was talking about the difference between fear and faith. And the difference between fear and faith is they're going the opposite direction. They're opposites. Faith is taking you closer to God and to your miracle, and fear is taking you further away. So when you talk about what you fear and the things that you're, uh, you're having trouble with, those things tend to get bigger. Are you with me? We need, we need to shrink the problem and grow the answer. It starts with who you listen to and what they're talking about. And sometimes you just have to say, listen, brother, sister, uh, we'll talk later. Or don't answer the phone. Hallelujah.
Turn to Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 and 8. We're going to move a little quick now, but I want you to get this down. We're talking about the seed now, okay? The seed. Galatians 6, 7, and 8 says, and I'm reading out of the Message Bible, so it'll be a little different than what you see on the screen. It says, do not be misled. No one makes a fool of God. What a person plants, he will harvest. The person who plants selfishness, ignoring the needs of others, ignoring God, Harvest a crop of weeds. All he will have to show for his life is weeds. But the one who plants in response to God, letting God's spirit guide his giving and do the growth work in him, will harvest a, cry, a crop of the best life possible. You're going to reap what you sow. Now, Rhonda and I have been married a long time, and, and I've been kissing her a long time, but I, 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 sometimes I'm kissing by faith. Because <laughs> despite how good I look and all of that, she married somebody that can be a problem at times. And I try my very best to treat her and Boney and the others around me the way I want to be treated. Amen? And then if I've mistreated them, I pray for, uh, I have to ask for forgiveness, and then I ask God to, for a crop failure on that seed. Amen? How many of you need a crop failure on some of the seeds you've sown in the past? Yeah, I just need a crop failure. But you reap what you sow. So, sow what you need or what you want. I hope Bishop comes back in here and asks the church to have another shot at, at giving again towards this building here. Because this building is really not just being built for you, but it's going to be built for generations to come. Amen? So, we can't just think about ourselves. We can't, I know that the bishop, he's not thinking about, well, I'll be preaching there in 40 years. No, he's, he's obeying God and putting this church here because there are generations that are coming that are going to need those churches, all five of them. Are you with me? So we're sowing towards a future generation. It may be your kids' kids. But I know that I need money. I know that I need it. We came here by faith. We left our grandchildren, our children. We've come here. We left our home. We left everything and moved here 100% to stay the rest of our life in Kenya. So I'm just like you. I don't have a home to go back to. I can't run home. I can't say, boy, things aren't working out here. We're just going to have to run home. No, we sold the house. We came here to give our life to Kenya. So I'm sowing my life into Kenya. So I need to reap just like you do. Hallelujah. Now this has been a hard year because we were setting up the Messiah Trust and, and there hasn't been, that I know of, a paycheck yet. No, I don't think there has been. But I sowed my time, and I know what my time is worth. I have two earned doctorates. If I were just doing counseling in the United States, my time would be worth $250 an hour. So I'll just take that $250 and credit it towards my future breakthrough. How about that? I was telling, uh, I think it was Boney, the other day about, uh, there was a man in my church, he was a, a, a premier architect, and the United States got into a building slump, and he was fired from his position, and this is a guy that was, had been used to a very, very, very big paycheck, and he came to me and says, Dr. Ron, I don't know what to do. I, I, this is the first time in, in, in two or three decades that I've needed a job. And there are no jobs out there for architects. Nothing's being built. 
And I said, well, I need 150 tables for the church. These are tables, you know, the big round tables that you can see, sit eight people at. I said, we're getting ready to have a, a big fundraising dinner, and I need 150 tables for eight. I had already received the offering to build the tables, to, to the, the wood and the attachments and all of that stuff. I said, I need somebody to put, all, put this all together, cut the wood and all of that. And he looked at me and he says, okay. He built 50 and got a better job. Do you see what I'm saying? He, 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 he put his time in the church and reaped a bigger miracle. Then he went and found, I said, in a service like this one day, I said, is there anybody here that needs a job? You're a man and you, you need a job. And, and a bunch of men raised their hand. He said, I'll come and run the, the, the project. If you'll come help me, we still need to build 100 more tables. Before it was over, every man that had joined those men had a job that was better than the one that they had before. You reap what you sow. Give your best to the church. If, if they need it and you can do it, just give it to them. Amen. Amen. Turn to Matthew 17 and verse 20. 17 and verse 20. Jesus said, you didn't have enough faith. Jesus told them, I assure you that even if you had faith as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move, nothing would be impossible. Now, Rhonda gave me, I know Rhonda. Rhonda gave me, I think, these are not mustard seeds, but they're, they're cucumber seeds. Do you women know, you understand that? So the power and just, you see that? Where's the camera? You see it? I mean, they're just little teeny bit. There it is. Now, the power, this is an awful lot of time. Are we, are we, are we there yet? You got it? Yeah. All right. The power in that, Jesus said, is enough to move a mountain. Yeah. Now, I haven't given you anything in a while. Let, let me just give you this. <laughs> <laughs> if you will go home and plant this, is that right? She'll get a cucumber? All right. See, here, you, you can get a cucumber out of that right there. I believe. I don't want you to feel left out. <laughs> See it? That, oh, you got three. You don't need that many. That's too much. Take one. All right, now you go plant it. Here, it's easy. Now, what he's saying, you don't have to have Dr. Ron or... or or Bishop Jimmy Faith, or, or pa Pastor Alice Faith to move, see it? Mm -hmm. Don't lose it. You don't have to have, listen, I'll leave this little bag up here if you would like to grow a cucumber. <laughs> you, you come up here and it'll be there for you. You don't have to have great faith to get your needs met. You just have to have faith. Just believe God can do it. And that he wants to do it for you. How he does it is up to him. You do what he tells you to do and he'll do what he promised he would do. He cannot lie. God cannot lie. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be made full. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you have received it and you shall have it. If two of you agree as touching anything, that they shall ask it shall be done for them by our Father which is in heaven.
the only reason you don't have it yet is you've not moved in faith. You've not sowed a seed for it. You've not stayed in faith for it. You'll say, yes, I'll have. No, I won't. Yes, I will. No, I won't. Yes, I will. All you're going to do is get a headache if you're double-minded. Amen? God has for you a breakthrough. You're going to reap what you sow. You're going to reap more than what you sow. Amen. Now, I've thought of some of the needs that I've, I've prayed for people in this church for, and some have spiritual problems, some have dealt with sickness, some have family problems, some have dealt with fear or financial problems, and on and on. All of us have, have had mountains that we have to move, but we all have to move them the same way. If you say to the mountain, be moved. So you're, say what you want, say that with me, say what you want, because you'll have what you say. Now, now you know why you have not received a breakthrough. You're saying what you don't want. real quiet because we're all guilty of it we let the devil rob us of our greatest blessings and they're just around the corner right joy it's coming now I want you to remember what I said about aiming your seed don't when the offering is received at the end of the service just don't throw money if you're tithing Put, put a problem with it as you put it in the basket. Amen? Mark 11, 23 and 24, quickly. I've got three minutes to do an hour and a half. It says, I assure you that you can say to this mountain, may God lift you up and throw you into the sea and your command will be obeyed and all that is required is that you really believe and do not doubt in your heart. Listen to me, Jesus said. You can pray for anything and if you believe, you will have it. I can't wait for some of you to come up and tell me, Dr. Ron, we, we talked about this a few months ago and I've got a breakthrough. I've been praying, believing, and I've got it. I've, I've bought bricks. I've, I've sown seed. I became a tither. I've done everything I know to do, and God has given me my supernatural breakthrough. Say this with me out loud. God is the source of my total supply. Now, in between the... The sowing and the reaping is time, and I don't have time to get into this, but I want to tell you how to water the seed. You, you, want to, you want to water the seeds that you've already planted, and you do that with what you say. Because it says, uh, the washing of the water of the word. So the word and water are, are synonymous. And when you want your seed to grow, one of the problems that we've had out in Messiah land is they've not all been getting rain. So the, the seed will not grow without water and your seed will not grow without you speaking your faith over it. Calling, reading the word of God over the problem. Finding promises in the Bible that fit what are your needs and reading those promises out loud over your situation believing that God's going to turn it around for you that's how you water your seed now I'm not going to quit until I get I got uh, a minute and a half go to write these down let me read them as you write them down Matthew 21 21 Jesus says that faith faith must be released through the spoken word. That's where you'll find that. Write down 2 Corinthians 4, 13. I believe, therefore I have spoken. Speak what you believe. Write down Romans 10, 8. The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. Write down Hebrews 11, 4. 
through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. Now, there's a whole sermon in that one. Ephesians 4.15. We are called to speak the truth and love to one another so that we may grow. We speak the truth to one another so that we may grow up. When you speak the truth to your seed, it will grow. If you curse your seed, it will die. So bless the things that you're doing and believing for your miracle and don't say anything other than what you want. Pray for a crop failure on the rest of it. Lastly, the harvest. Hebrews eleven six. So you see, it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must first believe that there is a God and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Mark 10, 29 and 30. Pull that one up if you can real, real quick. And we're going to read this one together. Mark 10, 29 and 30. And Jesus answered and said, there we go. So Jesus answered and said, read with me out loud. So Jesus answered and said, assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the gospels. Keep going. Verse 30, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this lifetime, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, lands with persecution, and in the age to come, eternal life. Now, I said to Rondo when we left the United States, I said, we're, we're doing that very verse. So let's just believe that where we've left uh, three children and five grandchildren and you've left a sister and two brothers and I've left a bunch more and moms, we've left moms, that we'll get a hundredfold moms, dads, brothers, sisters, grandchildren. One thing I love about going out to see the Messiah is all the children, I mean, they come by the hundreds, especially when you bring them something. Yeah, they love to pull on my hair. They can't believe it. They, they, they do this. They're like, what in the world? Where did you come from? I had a, I, I, was, a, I was in South, I was in, in Sudan out in a refugee camp when this kid came up. He's about 10 years old, and he said, um, did God paint you? I said, I said, what? Did God paint you? I said, why do you say that? He says, you're white. Did, did you do something wrong? And they painted you so that, that everybody would know you did. I said, I did nothing wrong. Did your mom and dad do something wrong? And all of his life, he had never seen a white man. Never seen a picture of a white man. And back then I had white, I had a, a blonde hair, and he couldn't believe it. He was, he was absolutely stunned that there was any more than just black people on this earth. Some of you, when your miracle gets to you, you've got to be able to recognize it. Are you with me? The only way that you'll recognize is be full of the word. Your heart will tell you this is it. Amen? Now, we'll talk about this more in the future. I'm sure I'll get another chance to, I can, I can finish this up. But this, this message you'll be walking in the rest of this year. Now, there is where he says, I'll give you 30, 60, and 100 fold. You know that? Do you know what a fold is? One fold is one, two fold is one plus one, ten fold is 
One plus one plus one plus one, a hundredfold is a hundred times. Okay? You're that the amount that you give and the way you treat that seed that I gave you, ladies, will determine the fold. If you plant something and water at the minimum, you don't take care of it very much. When you come to harvest time, it's not going to be like the guy that, that, that took care of his farm every day and put time in it. Are you with me? We'll end with this. 3 John 2, and we're, then we're done. And I'm going to pray for you. Thank you for letting me come and preach to you a little bit. I pray for you guys. Rhonda and I really love this church. We, we love this church probably more than Zimmerman, but don't tell them that. <laughs> Let's read this together, 3 John 2. Rhonda, this tie does look good on you. Isn't that thing beautiful? You like it? She picked this out for me today, and I'm like, you know that. What do you think? I mean, with a wife like good taste. Do you have it? Or, where is it, guys? I, all I can read is time's up. That's not what the scripture says. Third. Third John 2. Do you have it? Be, let's read it together. Beloved. If you want to know God's will for your life, there it is. He wants you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now, this year, I was sick five times with sepsis. I think I told you this last year, 2023. 20, the first time I had it, I had an 80% chance of living. Second time I had it, I had a 40, I had a 60% a chance. The third time I had it, I had a 40% chance. The fourth time I had it, I had a 20% chance. And when I had it five times, the doctors at Nairobi Hospital said, we don't know anybody that's ever had it five times in a year, so you, you shouldn't be here. But the reason that I did not die is that scripture. Put it back up there. Put it back up there. Read it. I pray that you... Because my soul is prospering. Now, soul prospering means that you, you take care of your spirit. You take care of it. You feed it. You come to church. You serve. You give. You, you, you bless others. You encourage. See, you keep your soul healthy so that when Satan comes to remove you from this earth, he can't because that verse is working for you. And the doctor said to me, if you keep this up, you're going to make me a believer. Think of that now. That God gives you so many miracles at the doctor's office. He knows he's not doing it. Might get him in church. Who knows? All right, I don't want you to bow your heads. Now, if you are facing a problem, whether it's mental, physical, financial, spiritual, maybe you need a job, I, I don't know, I, I, there's just so many needs out there, but if you're facing something that, that you need a miracle breakthrough, I want you to raise your hand. 
Now that's two thirds. But we'll wait. Just think, think it through. If you need prayer about this thing, raise your hand up. I would say that's almost all of us. Now I want you to put your hand down. Everybody bow your head because this is not for public consumption. And the camera should be on me and not on the people, please. If you are not participating in the building program, now be honest, it's just you and me here now. Nobody else is looking. If you're not participating, you haven't participated or pledged or whatever, I want you to raise your hand. All right, if you're not a tither, that means you give 10% of what your increase is every time you get paid. I want you to raise your hand. If you're not a tither, just be honest. Lift your hand. Look, we're going to get you a miracle out of, out of your honesty. If you're not a tither, raise your hand real high. Let me see. All right, that's about a third of the church. Now, Joy, Joy, I want you to stand here with me representing your dad. Those that raise their hand and you're not participating in the building program, I want to encourage you to get a hold of joy after the service, come up here and say, I want to participate in the building program. Buy a brick, just like Rhonda and I have had to do. Whatever it takes. And if you're not a tither, I want you to come up here and see joy and say, I just want you to agree with me that as I start tithing, I'm going to get my miracle breakthrough. Now, where is the, the youth pastor? Come here, my dear brother. You, you come up here. Where is, uh, come here. Beatrice. The, these are the pastors of the church. I just wanted to have a chance to hold your hand. That's what I'm doing right now. I want you to come up here. If you raised your hand and get agreement that as you sow your seed if you want to tell them look I need this or I need that get them agreeing with you that as you so aim your seed towards your need you're gonna get your miracle breakthrough now how many of you are expecting 24 to produce your miracle breakthrough let me see your hand then it's gonna take your giving so with your hand raised let me pray and then we're gonna, I'm going to turn it over to whoever I turn it over to. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see every hand raised. I pray that as we sow our seed into this church, that it won't take five years to, to build the buildings. They'll be built in half the time because we need to do other things. But God, not only is the church going to prosper, but I see people in this church room right now prospering that have never prospered in their lifetime I see people driving a car and they've never had a car in their lifetime I see people losing jobs praise the Lord and getting better jobs I see it because our seed is working for us it's moving the mountain of poverty that has stood against us for generations and it's going to be thrown right into the Indian Ocean now, I thank you, God, that as we make these commitments, we're not going to be uh, making a commitment today and then tomorrow let Satan take it away from us. But we're going to give so that it can be given back to us, good measure, pressed down, chasing together and running over. And I thank you, God, for the miracle breakthrough. In the name of Jesus. Now, one last question with our head bowed. If you are not a Christian... You've never given your heart to Jesus, and this is your first service to be in, the, or maybe you're coming back to Jesus, and you need prayer, I want you to raise up your hand right now before we leave this place. If you're not born again or you have backslid and you're not where you should be with God, lift up your hand real high, let me see it, and we'll agree with you, and this is going to turn your, your year around for, as well. Nothing is more important than your soul. And your soul cannot prosper if you're not born again. Now, everybody look at me. I want, to, I want you to do one more thing for me. And I'm, I'm a little bit over, but I want you to hear my heart. Next week, I don't know who's preaching. I don't know the schedule. but Next week, bring a friend. You have neighbors 
that are going to hell. How many of you know a neighbor that needs Jesus? Oh, now you don't even know your neighbors. That's really good. I says, try that one more time. How many of you know a neighbor that needs Jesus? Invite them. You say, well, we don't have enough seats. Fine, we'll stand. I'll stand over there and just let them have my seat. But bring your friends. Are you with me? We'll give up our seats. Just bring them because they need this. The, look, the government's not going to solve your problem. I, I, I think you realize that. Either party. You can be in the both parties. You can just party all day long. It's still not going to change. The government's not going to, but God can change your problems. So bring your neighbors here where the answer is. And let's see God do a miracle for them. Amen? Who do I give this to? Thank you so, so much.